Philippines' red nuclear hydrogen that will end oil and gas. The newfound climate urgency in boardrooms and government has sparked interest in cutting-edge technologies that could aid in achieving aggressive decarbonation targets. This includes hydrogen, in particular hydrogen produced using a renewable energy to make genuinely carbon-free fuel. This so-called green hydrogen could decarbonize industrial processes and possibly make marginal contributions to transportation and heating as well. While this may all sound fantastic, we need to keep in mind that the green hydrogen economy faces significant challenges in the areas of production and scalability, storage, and transportation. Keep watching and like this video to find out more about this breakthrough technology. Also, show us your support by subscribing to our channel. To manufacture hydrogen, it must first be separated from water or methane molecules, which is typically done by emissions-intensive natural gas. Despite this, hydrogen's popularity is on the rise, but you can't acquire it for free. The use of coal glassification or steam reforming. It's important to know that 95% of hydrogen that is produced and used worldwide originates from fossil fuels. This percentage is mostly involved with chemical and refining industries. Hydrogen was meant to be answered to a worldwide crisis, but because it requires fossil fuels, it is not even close to being solution. However, what if there is a method to break away from that reliance on fossil fuels? Hydrogen has the potential to be a miracle fuel, but it may be nuclear power plants that allow it to realize their promise. But what if we could create hydrogen without relying on fossil fuels? The answer might be right in front of our eyes. Environmentalists have a tendency to be sensitive which is why this form of hydrogen is referred to as pink or red hydrogen. It may be exactly what aging nuclear fleets need to remain economically viable. It is not as far-fetched as it may sound. In fact, Japan is doing that very thing which is called red hydrogen or hydrogen produced by nuclear fission. Up until now, Fukushima accident in 2011 Nuclear seemed destined to play an important role in providing carbon-free electricity. However, now that the world faces what amount to Fukushima accident every three months due to climate change, nuclear seems destined to play a much smaller role in this regard. Once again, public opinion regarding nuclear power is moving which indicates that the development of red hydrogen could be a distinct possibility. In this new change in global energy scenario, hydrogen ought to play a significant role. Hydrogen has been hailed as truly game-changing energy source for some time. The urgency to combat climate change and the geopolitical pressure and energy prices are shaping the energy future of economies worldwide. The majority of power required for the production of hydrogen comes from the combustion of fossil fuels. The majority of hydrogen that is produced today comes from the steam performance of natural gas or coal gasification, both of which emit carbon dioxide. However, the majority of hydrogen that will be needed in the future will be hydrogen with zero carbon emissions. The solution is to use electrolysis powered by intermittent renewable energy sources and using heat from the nuclear energy is a one such option. Compared to more recent projects that are based on renewable energy, nuclear power plants could produce hydrogen at lower prices, greater volumes, and closer to end users, which are industrial clients. However, the potential for reducing hydrogen more cheaply and in larger quantities than renewable energy and then selling the supply to current industrial customers for an additional income stream would help in nuclear rebirth. The question may be, as a fuel source, 
Why does hydrogen get stale so quickly? Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. However, it is almost never found in its elemental state. Rather, it is always bound inside larger molecules, such as water or methane. Hydrogen is not a source of energy unless you give it energy in order to turn it into one. Although hydrogen shows promise as an alternative transportation fuel, onboard vehicle storage continues to be a significant barrier to its widespread adoption. In terms of energy, electricity and hydrogen can be converted into one. However, the overall efficiency of electricity generated by fuel cells using hydrogen is expected to be lower than 40% somewhere in the future. It's possible that some of the hydrogen that is used for fuel will be transformed into ammonia. Because hydrogen is finding new application as a fuel, the amount of primary energy necessary to manufacture it may one day exceed the amount of primary energy required to generate electricity. It is probable that the need for heating buildings will become the next largest market displacing natural gas. Hydrogen can be used in place of diesel fuel for railroads. The electrolysis of water is by far the most prevalent method for making hydrogen. But there are other ways to do it as well. This method uses electricity to provide the molecules of water into hydrogen and oxygen. When power comes from renewable sources like solar or wind, Electrolysis frequently results in the production of hydrogen that is good to the environment. Electrolysis is a method that can be used to manufacture red hydrogen, but it can only be done using the energy that is supplied by nuclear power reactors. But the low efficiency and poor economics of this approach mean that the chemical process that is necessary to produce hydrogen needs a considerable amount of energy. Likewise, the heat that is byproduct of nuclear power facilities can be useful for purposes if it's directed into the right direction. If this were done, the problems of efficiency and economics would be solved. According to the World Nuclear Association, there are four ways in which nuclear power plants can make hydrogen. Thermal, chemical, ionizing radiation, and cold electrolysis. Electrolysis performed at the low temperature using steam electrolysis at a high temperature using steam, as well as generation of thermochemicals at high temperatures. Heat-based procedures increase productivity while reducing the overall cost of manufacturing. Beginning with electrolysis, the efficiency of the whole process moves from approximately 25% with today's reactors, driving electrolysis to 36% more efficient reactors doing so, to 45% for high-temperature electrolysis of steam, to about 50 or more with direct thermochemical production still to remove the barriers that might prevent red hydrogen from flotation. Processes that relies on heat are vulnerable to limitation imposed by material science. Because high temperatures and high temperature steam electrolysis can rapidly damage membranes. This makes the heat-dependent processes susceptible to the limitations imposed by material science. The same is true for maximizing the efficiency of existing nuclear reactors for the manufacture of high-temperature thermochemicals. This anomaly needs to be fixed. And only then will it have chance of becoming the holy grail of inexpensive hydrogen generation. Like any other alternative to fossil fuels, the technology still needs to work to overcome certain obstacles. But this does not mean that red hydrogen won't one day be used as a source of clean energy. In fact, some of the largest energy consumers in the world are showing rising interest in tapping into the fuel's potential. 
Modern sodium coolants and other technologies are used in advanced modular reactor designs to generally produce not just electricity but also thermal energy for industry domestic hot water and carbon-free hydrogen. In the same vein, the next-generation nuclear technology that is currently being developed could have to give a feasible production route or to as early as the 2030s, nuclear power is making a comeback as a viable option in energy researchers' quest to find carbon-free alternative sources of power that can deliver on a large scale. This comes after a decade-long decline after Japan's 2011 Fukushima nuclear catastrophe. France, the United Kingdom may be able to meet its 24 gigawatt target by constructing eight large reactors. The largest nuclear power producer in Europe intends to develop 13 additional next-generation nuclear power reactors by the year 2050. Additionally, the government of the United Kingdom is providing financing for development of more compact modular reactors, two of which will be around a third of the size of the two gigantic 1.6 gigawatt reactors that are in the number of buses being constructed at this time. The United States government has committed a number of millions of dollars to fund pilot projects in the states of Arizona and Minnesota. These programs are looking into high-temperature steam electrosis processes. There is possibility that nuclear power will play a pivotal role in this H2 hubs. In its energy plan for the year 2020, Russia aimed to achieve the lofty target of exporting 0.2 million tons of hydrogen by the year 2024 and 2 million tons by the year 2030, putting the country in a position to become a leader in the production and export of hydrogen on a worldwide scale with 38 nuclear reactors operating at their maximum capacity. The capacity of China's nuclear power facilities is currently ranked third highest in the world, and the country plans to raise that number to 70 gigawatts by the year 2025, an increase from the 55 gigawatts that were generated by the 53 nuclear power reactors in 2020. There is reason to be optimistic about hydrogen, because its capacity could jump from 120 gigawatts to 150 gigawatts by the year 2030. Hydrogen holds a great deal of potential, but due to the complexity of obtaining it and the abundance of more straightforward options, this potential has not yet been fully realized. If hydrogen is going to take the place of methane viable and cleaner source of fuel, then it might need to be produced on a massive scale at a cheap cost and with a minimal impact on the environment. Red hydrogen checks off a lot of boxes, but in order for it to become a de facto choice for energy needs, it will require major investments, interest from businesses, technological inventions, and support from the government within the next few years. If all of these things can be accomplished, hydrogen has the potential to be a game changer in terms of lowering greenhouse gas emissions and assisting countries in achieving their climate goals. What are your thoughts in this matter? Let us know in the comment section below. Click on the like and subscribe button for more. Until the next one.